Margarita. Margarita. I came from the mud. Oh, There's dirt on my hands. We are here at Sawgrass Recreational Park. By the end of this video, we're gonna feed some crocs. This croc. So the Florida Everglades is actually one of, if not the most ecologically diverse place in North America. It's fed by the springs and the aquifers we have in the northernmost part of the state. They flow down south, they fill up Lake Okeechobee, and then they overflow out into the coastlines. And with the water doing that, we have several different biomes and ecosystems that form off of this single source of water. The Everglades technically is fresh and salt water. You'll see the sawgrass like what we have behind us. Then it'll flow through the cypress trees like the Big Cypress Natural Area. And then it'll go down south into the Florida Bay and out throughout the Florida Keys, a singular operating in ecosystem. All right, guys, we're standing in this monster cage that this is what, with the new laws, FWC expects us to build for our pet iguanas and tegus. If you look around, this is a concrete bunker made so like basically to survive a nuclear holocaust and this is what they expect us to have if we want to keep our iguanas or our tegus and we can <laughs> yeah it is estimated that each of these cages is going to cost 10 15 thousand dollars if not even more per cage sawgrass recreational parks is one of the few places that are actually building these cages up to code because they are an educational facility and they do profit from showing off these tegus and iguanas all right, so these are our little baby alligators that we had that were born here. When alligators are born, they're usually in groups of 30 to 50 in a single nest. Out in the wild, there's a 90% mortality rate. Only four out of 55 will actually ever live to see adulthood. Those ones that do live to see adulthood will can get 30 to 50 years. Out in the wild, they are the top of the food chain out here. The only thing that is above alligators is humans. They are keystone species. They're necessary for our ecosystems. A lot of animals actually rely on alligators' presence in order to survive. During the dry season, a big gator will dig out a pond. When the water levels recede, that'll be the last spot of water and that can support the lives of many birds, turtles, and fish. So these definitely are a necessary part of our ecosystems. In 1970, there was only about 200 alligators that were actually left in the wild. But nowadays, here in the state of Florida, our state population is about 2 million. So it was actually a conservation success. And the way we actually did it was through the leather industry. The leather industry gave us a financial incentive to produce these animals in captivity, so when their numbers dwindled out in the wild, we maintained tons of genetic diversity on these farms and we reintroduced them and we're back up to our state population of about 2 million, which is a healthy population. You know, in the population of 2 million alligators, only about 5 people a year get bit, and unfortunately that number seems to be increasing. And it's not because there's more gators, it's honestly because there's more crazy idiot people that are running around, more pushing their limits, pushing their boundaries with these wild animals. But only five times a year is a pretty good number considering how many times we interact with these guys. With us down here in South Florida, it's literally on a daily basis. Believe it or not, every single year in the United States, over 1,635 people are bitten by other people in New York City. So that's six people a day. So you have a higher chance of being bit by a dude from New York than you have by an American alligator. That's why you don't want to move to Florida. That's, yeah, and then a lot of New Yorkers move to Florida, so it's scary, <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're gonna be feeding Cannibal. He's 13 feet, 800 pounds, and 64 years old. These guys are trained. We're having them come up right up to the front, and I'm gonna be throwing some food in his mouth for you guys. Cannibal. All right, so neither of us are crazy enough to go in the enclosure with the croc. So let me know, Nick, what is this that we're gonna use and what are we feeding these crocs? All right, so this is actually a little personal invention of mine. What I did is I took a sharpened carabiner, I put it on the end of a rope, on the end of a pipe, and we're gonna get some exercise out of these guys today. Nice. So the problem is with crocodilians in captivity is they're never gonna exhibit as much stress factor as they would in the wild. They're not fighting other crocodilians. They're not pursuing and hunting prey or patrolling territories. They're living a laid back life. They just sit by the pool. They don't really have much to do. And with that, sometimes you can have them storing too many calories and becoming obese. So right. what we try to do is we try to get them to exercise as much as possible and dangling chicken on a rope and making them run is a pretty good way to do it. So that's and what we're gonna be And it's entertaining, doing. so why not? It's gonna be a lot of fun. So what that sound is, is when he closes his mouth, he closes it so fast the air can't escape and it 
creates a bubble inside of his mouth. Margarita. Margarita. Margarita, food, food. Come on, Margarita. Margarita. Oops, sorry, damn it. Margarita, come on. Margarita, food, food. When you run it out of luck, need to get on stocks of cars. When you rub against the wall, then you get off the cigar.